Today I would like to discuss how we can approach mixed meters in patterns when they are alternating on each bar. Now this can seem like quite a complicated subject, but it is part of uh, what we need to do as conductors. You will find this time and again in your career in your study when you take on, for instance, Stravinsky, Bartok, Copeland, you name it. To show this, I'm taking a few bars from Bartok's Divertimento for Strings. Hello everyone, I'm Giovanni Griglio, I'm a conductor and a composer. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, this is a channel all about classical music and conducting technique in particular. If you like this kind of videos, put a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments. And now, let's keep going. In quite a few of the past videos, I talked about mixed meters. In a recent video, I talked about the height of the two and the three in a five bar. And uh, now let's take on Bartok with a series of bars where the mixed meters change from one bar to another. Now, I mentioned more than once how patterns as the sole element of conducting technique are fairly limited. However, there are situations in which they can become very useful for clarity. Let's take this passage in, in Bartok, for example. We have an 8-8 eight, eight bar, another 8-8 eight, eight bar, then a 6-8, another 6-8, another 6-8, and then a 7-8, and then a 9-8. So it's actually changing quite a bit. Now, starting from the 8-8 eight, eight bar, the first thing that uh, we need to understand is what the inner structure, rhythmical structure of the bar is. Is it um, uh, a 3 plus 3 plus 2? Is it a 3 plus 2 plus 3? 2 plus 3? And so forth, right? To determine this, we can take a look at how the composer wrote it. So if you look at the beaming in the cello part, it's 3 plus 3 plus 2, and that is also confirmed by the uh, slurs on top of the first, second violins, and viola bar. Same goes for the bar after that. The 6-8 is a 2, and then the 7-8 bar would be, again, a 3 plus 2 plus 2, where the 9-8 bar becomes a 3. So basically what we have here is a 3 pattern, for the 8-8 eight, eight bars, is a 2 pattern for the 6-8 bars, and it is again a 3 pattern for the 7-8 bars and for the 9-8 bars. How can you show the difference though when uh, all of them, except for the 6-8 of course, are 3 patterns? If you don't make any difference, then it's going to look all the same. So the 7-8 is going to look like the 9-8 and the 9-8 is going to look like the 8-8. Like eight, eight. And this can, of course, generate confusions um, among the players. So, once again, we go back to the height of the stroke. We're not disrupting any patterns in this exercise, but we're paying close attention of what the height and length of the stroke is. With the 8-8 eight, eight bar, we have a structure of 3 plus 3 plus 2. What's important is that you keep your bass line, you pulse at the bottom of it. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So this is 1, 2, 3. Now put it horizontally. 1, 2, 3. And then you only have 1, 2. And then you come back to the same point. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. When you come two bars after that, you get to the 6, 8. Then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. The 7, 8 bar that comes after is a 3 plus 2 plus 2. So it becomes 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. The height, the space that you're using <coughs> uh, in your stroke is fundamental to um, keep the rhythmic relationships inside the bar. This is a, and fundamental for clarity is pulsing. Always try to remember that the pulse comes from the wrist. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. This allows you to be very clear even in complex situations like this. And then no matter what the tempo is, you can 
keep your gesture concise and alternate whatever meter the composer throws at you. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. And you can change the combination according to the music itself. To practice this, put a metronome, do not never start at the tempo that the composer gives you when it's this fast of a tempo because then it's really difficult to control and especially if you're addressing this or approaching this for the first time then it becomes very difficult to for you to for your body you, you to learn the the movements you need to give your body a chance to learn what the movements are so that then they they, they can become natural they become ingrained uh, in your in your movements <clears throat> and then you don't have to think about it anymore of course so start with the metronome at a slower tempo record yourself look at the mirror look at the camera whatever and uh, pay attention to starting and landing on the same point pay attention to pulsing and pay attention to the length and height of your stroke do it slowly one two three one two one two one two three one two one two one two one two three one two you can change the combinations of twos and threes so that uh, you practice different variations of the same rhythm thank you for watching i hope you found this video useful and if you have any comments or any suggestions just put them down in the comments one liner is also fine upbeat mixed meters um pulsing what have you, whatever doubt you can have, I will try to answer it in one of the next videos of Conducting Bits. For more in-depth analysis, conducting videos, conducting tips, technique, head over to my website and I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, keep enjoying music, enjoying conducting and be kind to yourself.